into a Celtic style Cornish even song. Due to the inclement weather and the very small size of the chapel, we are not meeting in person. So we have created a compilation service with new content for this Sunday. Welcome to Horton Keep. Well, welcome to our service of Cornish Evensong at Holton Key Chapel. It's been written for us by the accomplished writer Anne Murphy, but in accordance with the requirements of the Church of England for an Evensong. So we will start with the opening response. A God makes speed to save us, O oh Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. And now let us say a prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. For you have guided the saints to bring your word to your people, to show your people your love, your forgiveness, and your care. We thank you, Lord, in this place for Saints Dominica and Indract, whom you brought from Ireland over 13 centuries ago, to the banks of the Tamer and the Cornish people living here. Here we stand in their place, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may shine your light. Guide our steps as you guided Saints, Saints Dominica and Indract. Help us to be a light to the world as they were here long ago. For yours, Lord, is the glory. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Oh, 
together. Your love for us, Lord God, is enduring, never ending, forever eternal. Our love for you so often falters and stumbles along. We confess that we do not take our responsibility for caring for your creation seriously enough. We confess that we don't always take our responsibility for each other seriously. We don't always show the friendship we ought. We don't always think about what it is that you would have us do. Help us to follow you as the saints who left their home to spread your word in this alien place also did. Forgive us our weaknesses and strengthen our resolve to be your people and to do your work in the glory of God. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The reading is from Isaiah 53, verse 11. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. One of the readings we've had today comes from Isaiah chapter 53. The whole chapter is wonderful, and if you've ever listened to the Messiah by Handel, you will recognise parts of it. The prophet is referring to Messiah ship, but that is an ongoing project. I think what he says applies just as well to the situation we find ourselves in today. I shall intersperse what I have to say with the whole of the chapter in three parts. You can tell which is which by the quality of the writing. Isaiah is really very good and this chapter was written in verse. A year ago or so I was reading a book by Gabrielle Walker called Antarctica. She's a scientist and thinks and writes like someone who has been trained as a scientist. But she also 
writes in the most accessible style so that even a complete non-scientist like myself can read the book with pleasure. She spent a winter in Antarctica and recounts the research being carried out by a Franco-Italian team. They were boring down into the ice at Dome C. This is at an altitude of over 10,000 feet. They were bringing up samples from various depths. And there were two reasons that this was significant. Firstly, the depths told them how far back in time they were going. And secondly, contained in every sample of ice that they recovered were tiny quantities of air which had been there since it was frozen in. They were therefore able to say with some accuracy what the atmosphere was like at various times in the past. It really is a most interesting book. They were drilling at a depth of three and a quarter kilometers, which took them back 800,000 years, nearly a million years. They could therefore tell what the climate was like over an 800,000 year time span. To put this into some sort of perspective, Homo sapiens, that's you and me, have been around for maybe 300,000 years, a little over one third of the time that the drilling team was looking at. Men have looked Men have lived in cities for maybe 6,000 years to be a drop in the ocean. In all of that 800,000 years, the carbon dioxide level has moved in lockstep with the temperature. As the temperature went up, the carbon dioxide level went up and vice versa. In all of that time, the highest the concentration of carbon dioxide has been was 290 parts per million. We are now, and only since the Industrial Revolution, which started in this country, at around 400 parts per million and rising fast. That's 290 parts per million for 800,000 years and 400 parts per million today. But the author is still first and foremost a scientist. She says, the deepest voids of Dome C hold a warning we would do very well to heed. Hmm, yes. And so to Isaiah, chapter 53. Who believes what we've heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? The servant grew up before God, a scrawny seedling, a scrubby plant and a parched field. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing to cause us to take a second look. He was looked down on and passed over a man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people turned away. We looked down on him, thought he was scum. But the fact is, it was our pains that he carried, our disfigurement, all the things that are wrong with us. We thought he brought it on himself, that God was punishing him for his own failures. But it was our sin that did it to him, that ripped and tore and crushed him. He took the punishment and made us whole. Through his bruises, we get healed. We are all like sheep who have wandered off and gotten lost. We have all done our own thing, gone our own way. And God has piled all our sins, everything we've done wrong, on him, on him. Dome C 
is just one example reported by one person. And the first thing that any scientist would say is that you can't rely on one single finding. But we all know the game is up and we cannot continue as we are. Besides, this isn't a talk on the climate emergency and neither should it be. Partly that is because I don't have a crystal ball any more than you do. What the changes are going to have to be and over what time scale is not something that any of us know. But what I will say is that in my view, it'll be much more thoroughgoing and much sooner than we expect. It'll not just be a question of driving the same mileage as we always have, but in electric cars, neither will it be a matter of closing down a few power stations, coal power stations. It'll be a matter of rethinking the whole of society and the whole of our way of life. This will not be easy. My generation has left my grandchildren's generation with terrible problems. And so back to Isaiah, this is verses seven to nine. And it's in the message translation, by the way, the message. He was beaten, he was tortured, but he didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence. Justice miscarried and he was led off. And did anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare, beaten bloody for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked threw him in the grave with a rich man, even though he had never hurt a soul or said one word that wasn't true. To us today, this sort of prophetic verse sounds absurd. In the past five years, the Trussell Trust tells us that the use of its food banks has increased from just over one million annually to two and a half million. How can such a thing be in one of the richest countries in the world? Yet it can and will continue to do so for long or so long as we try to follow our own way. It sounds as though it would be absurd to say we're going to try to follow God's way. But what is so sensible about the Trussell Trust being responsible for 2.5 million calls on its services last year with starvation as the alternative? What is so sensible about some driveways outside a house containing cars, the cost of which would easily buy a complete house for a homeless family? But as Isaiah says, and this section is the last section, and it contains the passage, verse 11, which we had in the readings. Still is what God had in mind all along to crush him with pain. The plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin so that he had see life coming from it. Life, life, more life. God's plan will deeply prosper through him. Out of that terrible travail of soul, he'll see that it's worth it and be glad he did it. Through what he experienced, my righteous one, my servant, he will make many righteous ones. As he himself carries the burden of their sins, therefore I'll reward him extravagantly the best of everything the highest honors because he looked death in the face and didn't flinch because he embraced the company of the lowest 
He took on his shoulders the sin of many. He took up the cause of all the black sheep. We're the black sheep. It's only when we start to realize the absurdity of the way that we live at present that we shall start to look in a godlike way. That, that, after all, is what we're called to do. It's not our job to save the planet or live more sustainably, admirable and necessary though those intentions are. Our job is to live in such a way that we are the righteous ones and that God delights in us and rejoices over us and we shall get it wrong over and over again. But it is our job, it is our calling and it's horribly difficult. Cars have so got their hooks into us that it's almost impossible to us <clears throat> for us to envisage a world without cars. Yet we know that they are in considerable part responsible for that 400 parts per million. And that calling, that understanding, is why we are so different to those without religion who try to do the right thing as they see it. To them, it is highly sensible to, to save the planet because there's nowhere else to live. But to us, just being righteous and having God rejoice over us and delight in us, however much we get it wrong, that is what we're called to be and that is what we're called to do. In principle, the results of the two systems could be the same, but in fact, they are chalk and cheese. They are utterly different. And the future will be okay, even if very different to how we live now. God is invested in us for some extraordinary reason. He will put matters right as he has before, and will no doubt do so again. But it will not be without cost, cost to God and cost also to us. We say the responsory. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Most high, all powerful, good Lord. Yours are the praises the glory, the honour, and all blessing. To you alone, most high, do they belong, and no man is worthy to mention your name. Be praised, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially through my Lord, brother, son, who brings the day, and you give light through him. And he is beautiful and radiant in all his splendour. Of you, most high, he bears the likeness. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister moon and the stars. In heaven you formed them clear and precious and beautiful. Praised be you, my Lord, through brother wind and through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through which you give sustenance to your creatures. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister water, which is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praised be you, my Lord, through brother fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister mother earth, who sustains us and governs us and who produces varied fruits with coloured flowers and herbs.
we offer our intercessions for the whole of God's creation and our part in it. And we say together. We pray for the lost sheep of this world, for politicians striving to hang on to power and influence, for leaders of the nations who have forgotten to serve the common good. We pray for the lost sheep of this world, for all who follow the fashions and frivolities of today at the expense of tomorrow. For all who get swept along by the crowd on tides of prejudice and easy judgments. We pray for the lost sheep of this world, for all who wander off on their own to escape from reality. For all who are led astray, away from safety and well-being. We pray for the lost sheep of this world for all who take what they have for granted, for all who are unable to give thanks for the things they have. Loving Shepherd, we pray for your healing in all who are sick at this time. We pray for all who mourn. Lift them in your loving arms and carry them through their time of grief. To the glory of your name. Amen. We say together, Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. The Collect. Lord of the hosts of heaven, our salvation and our strength, without you we are lost. Guard us from all that harms us and raise us when we fall. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever. To Glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. 
As we come to the end of our service, we say together this Christian Celtic blessing. We all say this. May the road rise up to meet us. May the wind be always at our back. May the sun shine upon our face. The rains fall soft upon our fields. And until we meet again, may God hold us in the palm of his hand. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace, and then let us take that peace into a suffering world, and into a suffering creation, as a pledge of our faith, and as, a, and as God's seal on our prayers. <coughs>